Are you strong? Yes. I like to think I am. Some days. Some days I also feel very weak. Uh, yes. Emotionally, spiritually, socially, yes. Do you ask for help when you need it? No, I think I can do it myself and often prove myself wrong. I suppose being disabled and being male, you get that big boys don't cry thing all the time. Not as often as I should. Not easily. And how does asking for help make you feel? <sighs> Awkward, uh, slightly ashamed. It makes me feel anxious. I'm already, I'm already ready to be let down sort of thing. An average neurotypical person would get it intuitively. I don't, so if I had to like ask for that, I feel really guilty or like really stupid or really weak or really helpless. Vulnerable. And I don't like feeling vulnerable. Have you ever experienced toxic masculinity? Yes, all the time. <laughs> Whenever you meet a straight guy who's putting on a bravado to be something that he's not, um, I always think that's quite transparent. Uh, but with regards to actually it being toxic, the whole mask for mask culture is quite an obvious one uh, within the gay community. I tend to do it with myself when it comes to my own, you know, emo like I don't cry. There was a time recently um, I had started wearing makeup um, and I was attacked for the fact that I was wearing makeup and I was a man. We're talking about masculinity. Forget it, it doesn't exist. Masculine, feminine, it's all made up. I grew up in a very like masculine part of South East London, you know, and I was the, the flaming feminine boy and that gave me kind of power, but it also empowered me because I reached a point where I wanted to go against the, that grain and that changed my whole life. Basically, I had to spend a lot of uh, time unlearning what I had learned and how a man should be how they should uh, react. I was raised in a way to treat women uh, with respect, but I was also trained not to show my emotion. 